come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. This is a movie review podcast, and we may get into spoiler territory, so just warning you. But every Saturday night, we get together, we watch a movie, and then we talk about it around a bar for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight, the movie was chosen by Holly. Yeah! Holly, what did we watch? My Bloody Valentine. Which one? From 1981, the original. <laughs> Who's that directed by? Ah, that's a good question. George, oh. George oh. Ma- Mahalka. Mahalka? <laughs> George Mahalka. He's Hungarian. Oh, awesome. <laughs> A a fact out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it in the first minute. Good job, everybody. <laughs> that was the one thing that we have ask, nothing else to ask, provide. Did you just yeah. look at the first thing in IMDb yeah. trivia? <laughs> so this is uh, a slasher film, a vintage slasher Indeed. movie. Yes. There's a formula that you have to follow to be considered a slasher movie, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People have to die. Mm-hmm. Okay. There has to be uh, a killer who's, I mean, uh, some sort point of, of view that yeah. we may take at some point. They have like a ritual. Like they always show up on a certain day for a certain reason sort of thing. At least in yeah. the mainstream movies. Typically that's how a it goes. backstory mm-hmm. leading up to this slasher. A mythology of some yes. sort. That's what I kind of, I like about like that vintage. There's always mm-hmm. like the horrible thing that occurred in the past yeah. that mm. damaged the psyche of the, yes. uh, the slasher. And you don't know who it is until the end of the movie. I yes. mean, that's kind of... Oh, yeah. So, because there's a remake, we may uh, spoil moments of the 2009 remake. We're probably going to talk about both of these I will He was crazy. He was crazy the whole time. <laughs> Sean! <laughs> so, sorry. I'm sorry. Just came out of me. I don't can't contain myself. I'm sorry. But, uh, well, I mean, this also shares a... Uh, there's a similarity here between the American slasher movie of the 1980s and the Italian giallo films of the 1970s, because most of what you've just said applies to both genre, right? Mm-hmm. Because you've mm-hmm. got the event that somehow damaged, psychologically damaged the the killer. Mm-hmm. Yes. We, but in the, the ritual, in the giallos, as he wears the black gloves and is killing people for some reason known only to him, mm-hmm. and we only discover what that is generally in the last couple minutes of the movie. Yes. This also applies to the slasher film. So how can we delineate these two genres uh, from each other? There's the Harbinger. Right. Mm -hmm. Are we asking what makes this distinctly American versus? It's not. Because this isn't. Yeah. Well, technically, yeah, yeah, very true. I mean, it is technically still American. Not Uh, to get technical on you. It's It's still American. Yeah. Just saying. It's some kind of it's Canadian, Canadian name. Halloween. It's Canadian Halloween. Yeah, it really it's is Canadian. Very Canada's Canadian. Canada's answer to Halloween for sure. <laughs> very Canadian. Well, they would say that maybe Black Christmas was the Canadian Halloween, and Halloween was the American Black Christmas. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Black though. Christmas is considered to be like the first like mainstream slasher, so that that is true to a point. But this movie, beat for beat, like even in its plot points, is Halloween. Like, yeah, much basically. more. Much more so than Black Christmas is. Which is, well, because it has the, uh, it occurs on a holiday. Well, you've that- got the, the the villain escapes a mental institution on a holiday to come back and kill the people in his hometown. Does he? And, well, that's what it posits. That's what this movie posits. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you even have down to like, you know, PJ Souls, Linda's character in the bed, Bob, get me a beer. That almost be for beans in she this gets movie as well. Scared by the sheriff at an opportune time. Yeah, there's a sheriff bracket in this movie as well. Same jacket even with the fur collar <laughs> and the leather just jacket. The 80s. That was that's <laughs> yeah. the eighties. It's yeah. what they did. That's a sheriff. Hundred degrees out. Yeah. That's yeah. a sheriff. Yeah. Jacket. Fur jacket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the leather with the fur, fur collar. Yeah, that's he even has the like. He even has the fake scare moment, just like Sheriff Bracket in yep. Halloween. Yeah. 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 There's uh, there's a costume. Mm-hmm. It's usually a costume. Mm-hmm. Identity. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the specific. yellow guys, I suppose they all wore the same costume. It seems yes. like the raincoat or whatever in the black Blood, gloves, blood and black lace, yeah, definitely has a costume. Fedora. Mm-hmm. And silk, the silk scarf and the mask. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing with the giallo movies. You never really get, like, the cameras always seems to be, like, you know, at shoulder height mm-hmm. or yes. something like that. You mm-hmm. never actually get to see. But 
the Americans said, we're going to put them in some type of, every slasher has to wear a distinctive outfit. So you can actually see him. Specifically a mask, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, we can show him in the the frame. So this all came about after the success of Friday the 13th, right? I did some research because, I mean, this is the golden age and- Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's like the 80s were the golden age, but specifically, it's like 1980 to 1982. Mm -hmm. 1983, you're starting to do the come down from the slasher movie. And by Mm -hmm. 84, you had uh, Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street, and that kind of took everything into like a fantasy horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in 1980, it was uh, because Friday the 13th came out in May, and this came out in February of 1981. So this was like, you know, I mean, somebody was putting this thing into production like as quickly as you possibly could to get this thing into theaters before Friday the 13th Part 2, which was like, you know, <laughs> May. Yeah. Again, yeah. Right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Followed by The Fun House, followed by Graduation Day, followed mm-hmm. by Final Exam April and Fools. New Year's Evil. April Fools. That's what I was thinking <laughs> yeah. of. Yeah. That was a late Mother's cover, Day. Though. Mother's too? Day. Yeah. Day. Yep. Yeah. And the Canadians were like, what do we have up here, eh? Uh, well, we got mines. We could do the whole mine thing, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, put them in a mask. That'd be fun. But this is like kind of what makes My Bloody Valentine distinctive in some ways is the setting. Mm. Right? Well, the setting is key. Not mm-hmm. all slasher movies, the setting is key, but this one, it's, pac- it's practically a character. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because without that, you don't even have the villain. That's no. true. It, it really yeah. is like the catalyst for everything. Mm-hmm. A because small we're town. Set it in the mines. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Valentine. Uh, Valentine Bluffs. bluffs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they actually do get up on the bluff at some. Point. They do. Yeah. Like, There's an uh, overlook. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. It is a yeah. Of course, I remember the spot. And there is not a goddamn thing to do in this town. That's nope. for sure. No. Nope. That's why they're so eager to have a party. Well, the town goes ape shit for Valentine's Day, which is this year amazing because this is the first time. Is it the first time they've celebrated Valentine's Day at all? Like, has it been banned before? I they this? said something or about just, twenty years, yeah. right? Yeah, Didn't they say well, tw- first dance that, in twenty years. Yeah. 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 So, if Valentine in Valentine Bluffs, I always want to say Valentine's Bluffs, or it doesn't right. sound right. Valentines or Valentine. Valentine, Valentine Bluffs. Bluffs. But do you think they just skipped over it every year? They're just like, oh yeah, it's that day. I think they it's like a da- I think it's like it. a dark day that yeah. everyone yeah. kind of like mourns and it's like, shit, don't talk yeah. about yeah. it. Right like, yeah. Well, why? What happened? <laughs> what what happened twenty years ago? <laughs> That's what the harbinger oh. at the bar is for. He tells you all about it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Disgruntled bartender tells you the whole story every night. Yes. <laughs> Like, Every do you think those kids are like, shut the fuck up? Heard it before. <laughs> so many goddamn times. Charlie, we don't want to hear it again. Uh, <laughs> that guy's great, though. He is good. Yeah, if you is. don't listen to this story, you're gonna die. He's It'll got no you. He's got no chill, <laughs> and he's yeah. got a rhyme too. He does. Yeah, Remember yeah. the poem? I was hoping no. he would just speak in rhyme throughout yeah. the entire movie. <laughs> that would be maybe bad. he wrote the song that we hear at the end. Oh, God, uh, I mean, so. it's his. It, well, it's it's the the ballad of uh, Harry Warden. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe he did. Maybe that's from him. Can you sing us a few bars of the ballad? Uh, what was it? Uh, and no one will know <laughs> as the years come and go <laughs> of the horror from long time ago. <laughs> there it is. It's great. It's a wonderful song. <laughs> Your, your your movie is not legitimate un- unless you have a song dedicated to it in the end credits. This is how it has to be. Like Dead Heat, we were saying. Dead Heat! Dead Heat! Yeah. It's gotta be. Go I mean, out on a high note. If- right. Like, you could have a bad movie, but if you have a good song dedicated to it at the end, like, it gets passed. Was it a good song? Well, I, guess I thought it was. It was. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, it's it's guy playing all loops, and you're just. Yeah. yeah. It's like John Denbury kind yeah. of. Yeah. Like, a full yeah. Of yeah. It's like Gordon Whitefoot. Yeah. It's yeah. the beginning of Stairway to right. heaven, it's just like dun, 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 dun. that was awesome. It was wonderful. Yeah, I give that song four stars. There you go. <laughs> right. So it takes place primarily in a. It's a mining town. Mm. This is what they're apparently in this town. All we get to see really is that there's a mine, the yeah. Hanniger mine. Yes. There's a bar. The, uh, the, yeah, there's the barn, the Union Hall. Uh, a laundromat. A laundromat. And, the, and that's basically it. Because I think the sheriff's department is in like Carpenterville or something next yeah. door. Oh, really? Or one town over. What's going on there in Valentine's Bluff, eh? 
<laughs> Valentine, Valentine's. Yeah. I was more concerned with your Canadian accent. It's it's a, that's a very angry yeah. Canadian. It's really angry. <laughs> are, you a, wait, wait, are you a Canadian or Canadian. a pirate? That's right. You, that, can't yeah. do, you can't do angry Canadian. That's just like not a thing, right? It's no, very no, polite. Uh, no, like and if they get angry, they have to apologize. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, I sorry. Just, I didn't oh, mean to lose, sorry, didn't mean to lose my stack. Yeah, sorry. Very sorry. Canadians, we're very true. We're going to get Canadian hate mail for this episode. Hey, I don't appreciate there what you've been saying yeah. about this movie and our people. And then they'll send us donuts. Yeah. <laughs> right. From Stan, yeah. Stan Mikitas. Oh, man. Yeah, no. Uh, Here's some Tim Hortons. <laughs> Think better of us, eh? Yeah. I haven't had this much fun at a Canadian movie since Strange Brew. I, think. <laughs> oh, dude, I wasn't here for that one. I hear it wasn't fun, though. That didn't go over so well. No, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, all right, so. The setup, so 20 years ago, uh, there was a cave-in at the mine. Mm. Actually, this is the same, basically, in both the original and the remake. Yeah, yeah. That somebody Pretty didn't exactly. believe the, the lines. The methane gas exploded, trapped a bunch of miners. It took them a while to dig them out. And by the time they did, there was one survivor. Harry Warden. And he turned cannibal. Yeah. Yes, to, survive to survive for six weeks, because they, geez, yeah. down there yeah. long enough. Didn't yeah. the Chilean miners survive? About that long, oh, without cannibalism, without home, eating right? each other. I yeah, mean, for, like, for all we know, like, they've got better technology. Yeah, yeah, they, right. We so, might, they had snacks or something. Might, we might not know all that whole story. No, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I'm mean, pretty sure they were giving them food. Like, I think, yeah, they, were, I think, I think yeah, they were giving I think them yeah, food. Yeah, sending supplies. Down. They were sending yeah. humans down there, but it was still food. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, a cage of like peasants in the street. Yeah, right. Drill down. Like, I can't put a person down there, but we can drill like a small hole. Right. Yeah. Right. They probably drill. Yeah, air and food and everything. What if they clogged up the air hole with food? Uh oh. Well, then you oh, what the a predicament. Down to eat the f- no, oh, monkeys, monkeys again. <laughs> oh, no. We know just the monkey <laughs> for it. Look for the history of Hollywood animals <laughs> coming out soon <laughs> by the Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. yeah. So Harry Warden then uh, gets uh, taken away to a mental institution. Mm, see, he has lost his damn mind. Yep. Yeah. So this yeah. is like a sequel without there being an original movie. But what do you think about like it doesn't start <laughs> you don't really this need way. It. No. Yeah. Like you find this out during the course of the movie which yeah. is an interesting you know I mean it does start with a murder mm. where an amorous couple who apparently don't have a car, a bedroom, a house, <laughs> a motel. Even though they're oh, adults. They're definitely adults it's too. A very yeah. small town. Yeah. Yeah. It's like mean, 35. Yeah. So they decide to go down to the mine and get it on. And uh, there, apparently one of them is Harry Warden or something. He kills yeah. the woman. And then we you, you dole out the flashback. I guess it's the bartender actually tells us mm. the history of how, you know, Harry Warden came the, to be. The specter. Yeah. And every the Valentine's legend. Day, he comes back to get you. It could be you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you little assholes. <laughs> yeah. Not very happy, man. He's real bitter. Yeah. For yeah. for no established reason ever. Yeah, I mean he did. Well, he's he's the one who found he really Harry, liked Harry Valentine's Warden. Day. <laughs> yeah. he Is loved that what it, it was? He's like, sure. I love Valentine's Day, and this guy. It's ruined. my favorite fucking holiday, and I can't celebrate it. That's yeah. why. Well, the Move town to a sure different loves town. It. <laughs> <laughs> the town loves it because when they come back, they go all in on their Valentine's yeah, they do. Day decorating. Hearts galore. Yep. Thank you, Everywhere. Mabel. Ah, oh, uh, poor Mabel. Mabel. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing too. Like this movie, like usually, I mean, most of these films that you see, the cast is all you know, like the twenty-year-old high schoolers, mm. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah this definitely. one kind of distinguishes itself. I think. I mean, I'm trying to think. You know, I mean, I know New Year's Evil has a bunch of thirty-year-olds probably. I'm trying to think what like Black Christmas one. is college kids. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is a sorority. So but these guys are like, you know, in their late, mid to late 20s. And then they have jobs. That's all we know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that town, does make yeah. it, does yeah. that give it a different feel than other yeah. slasher films of the Because same? they should be smarter, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but they're small town folk. They don't know any better. They're, just, they're all stuck in this town. And... But like really, the funnest thing to do is to go hang out in a mine. 
Like to them, yes, that is the funnest thing you I can do. I guess so. I mean, when the girls want to like go back down there, like as the guys would be like, I work there all day. I don't want to go back exactly, down in this right? place. Like, why, yeah. why is I this go hang out where I work? But yeah. apparently, yeah. apparently, it's the sexiest place in the yeah. town. <laughs> like nobody can have sex unless they're in the mine. I mean, nobody has sex in this no, movie, but the has. only way you can get anybody riled up is to be like, let's go in the mine because yeah. it's dangerous. Yes. They're shafts. Ah, uh, see, that's it's what it dangerous. is. Right? Dangerous. It's because it's, it's the anniversary. It's and collapsed. Like, there's a killer. It's dangerous. Well, one girl's like, it's like a roller coaster, right? And mm, like, they're like, really yeah, it is. No, no sure. it's not. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sweetie. 2,000 feet down into the cold, dark bowels of the earth. Yeah, why does anybody think this is a good idea? It's not. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> well, the other thing is, like, when these guys work down there, they're wearing masks, right? Yeah. You gotta yeah. have the rebreathers, but, like, it's okay to just go wandering around down there uh, for. Apparently. Yeah. For well, and, like, it. one of the characters even says at the beginning, all that methane gas down there will kill us, but yet. We're going to go down yeah. without any masks. No, no <laughs> problem. Fine. Well, they were going to go right back up to <laughs> give Hollis a little credit. Yeah. Uh, Canadian Wilford Brimley in this movie. His name was Hollis? I think it was Hollis, yes. Yeah. Huh. The guy with the mustache? God, yeah. that's a really Brimley Canadian Jr., yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. Hollis! It's <laughs> <laughs> just a great name to shout. Yeah. What's another Canadian name? Mackenzie? Gordy. Gordy. Yeah. Gordy. Gordy. Oi, Gordy. Yeah. Bert? Uh, Gordon. Yeah. Oh, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> the hate mail. You want to send that to you? Oh, oh God, we're it. starting to yeah, sound like a Kevin Smith, Smith movie. Oh, God. God. <laughs> com. Yeah. Uh, but you were saying the mind plays a, uh, like, becomes like a third character in this film? I think so. Basically, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. of, you're saying, the atmosphere? It creates the, well, it posits that it creates the villain of the movie. That's what we're told at the beginning, at least. Right. So. Yes. The mind collapse created mm-hmm. Harry Warden, or mm-hmm. the killer Harry Warden. It's automatically a place of danger, based on yeah. the information we yeah. know. Mm-hmm. But it gives, I mean, like, you know, I mean, the Friday the 13th summer camp. I mean, that's one of those things that, you know, I guess that you have some kind of, you know, I don't know if you guys went to summer camp, or you went camping, or you played in the woods or something, mm-hmm. right? So there's something about that setting that... yes works for a slasher movie you know it's always the guy in the woods right Mm -hmm. like uh madman was another wood one the final terror the burning yeah they just keep going Uh, (laughs) the burning boy camp one of the other Uh, these are all from like those couple of like three years they did all these um yeah but the i mean you usually have i mean aside from those uh you know it's the college campus or a small town i'm usually college campus but small town uh, the hospital. Midwest, the hospital. Mm-hmm. That's a, always a big location. Visiting hours and uh, yeah, Halloween too. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or the Fun House. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That was an fun odd. Yeah, always, yeah. I guess that was an yeah. interesting. We were going to set it at the carnival, but to set it in a, a mine, warehouse. Yes. There's always a location, some creepy location. But this is like a good idea, I think, mm. for a movie because There's, a mine has so many. It's so limited. There's. It's no a maze. Way out. Like, it's basically it's a maze, yeah. basically. But you have like the sump pump, the room with the sixty foot deep, you know, water that yeah. can. Yeah. You've there's, got cavens that can happen anywhere. You've got engine rooms. There's you've different got, elements. Yeah. It's not just there's this room and this room. There's actual dangers. Right. In this they place. make it interesting by adding a few different things to it. You're not just in a mine the whole time, like you yeah. said, the sixty foot uh, deep water that's surrounding it. So there's little areas within it that make it more interesting than just it's, being in a mine. Yeah. Right. If yeah. being in a mine was not interesting enough to maze. begin with. Yes. I know, that's actually, now that I'm comparing the two, kind of, you know, I mean, to the detriment of the remake, the remake... Is just a mine. Is just a mine. And they get down there, they're tunnels. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Where this one gets you, like, all over the place in the, whatever, the room with the hanging uh, suits. With the, yeah, with their... Yeah, although that was an element in the remake, but still. Yeah, but not taking to the same... Not to the same effect. It's a good element in this. How do they, I haven't seen the uh, remake in a little while. What is, how do they use it in the remake, the... The coats and everything. I think it was just up. a scare tactic. I don't yeah. like I don't, a jump scare yeah, and then nothing was, was there. It happened once, like it wasn't all dropping down. Like and, a couple dropped and then it was him, and then she ran to the next room. I think. Yeah. I, no, if I remember. Yeah. 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 It was very quick. That's why you don't remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they they did pay you know homage to that in the remake. They also do a uh, laundry room death in the remake. Yes, with the oh, nanny. With the nanny. Yeah. And here it's poor Mabel. Oh, poor Mabel. Mabel, who gets fried to death in the. She's like the, well, I guess she's technically the second victim. But. Yes, after the heart-tattooed woman at the beginning. 
<laughs> Did we also mention uh, we watched the uh, this is a special edition with the uh, cutout footage added back in that yeah. we watched tonight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, we should probably have said something about that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember, I mean, I'm only, this is the first time seeing it with all this new stuff added back in because I only remember uh, watching the original cut of this. And I have to imagine now watching it and be like, wow, this is, they really cut out everything because Mm -hmm. there's nothing. If you just go by what they've put back in here, there's there's nothing in that original cut. Well, this is, this is the other thing that I think distinguishes the American slasher film. Uh, I mean, outside of the movies of like Dario Argento, the, the giallos, Mm -hmm. right? I guess we're still contrasting these two, very some of the cousins, right? Of this type of movie. Um, like Dario, Dario Argento would go in for these, you know, like super gory kind of violent, uh, brutal, you know, murder scenes, yeah. right? But the rest of these yellows don't go that uh, gory. They're more focused on the mystery, you know, mm-hmm. aspect of the story, where it seems like most of the slasher films that you remember are because they're punctuated with this, like, really sometimes hideous <laughs> gore because they had this uh, the technological ability at this time yes to do the, all these effects so you know this is where tom savini right a burgeoning know, effects uh, uh era at this point it's mm-hmm. like figuring out th- the things they they could do and yeah. then just psh, hey go for it make yeah. me an eyeball that pops out but that's like why i mean that, that is i think why people went back you know why friday the 13th was such a big hit was because you know you got to see someone Get their head chopped off or get their throat slit and it actually looks like they got their throats, you know, it's just Kevin gory. Bacon got an arrow through his neck. Yeah. yeah. A prolonged and it's like yeah. it's uh there's a brutality to these. Even in this one, I think mm-hmm. there's like uh oh, yeah. you know, the girl on the um uh the, the hose, whatever, the, the, the shower. shower. The shower yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like there's an uncomfortableness, I think, that still exists even when we watch it now that had to be at the time, like this is transgressive and something that right. we've never seen before is all these people like getting brutally you know skewered on yeah. you know, yeah. these different implements and just like the hideousness of that gore you know yes i actually thought like her being put on that shower thing was a little too delicate like the way he did put her on it was right. a little too delicate i thought because like i was thinking to the actually the friday the 13th remake um the part where he puts the girl on the antlers, like on the door, mm. like he oh, yeah. shoves her on that yeah. and like mm-hmm. i thought that's how that should have gone like he Put her on it too soft and slowly. I, I thought. I was, I was, like, I was like, "What the no fuck is happening?" Yeah, the no way that would have gone through her. Exactly. Right. Yeah, because he was too <laughs> delicate about it. And the cut to the other side of the effect, where it shows or almost shows it going in. Yeah, it almost feels like it cuts too late. Like you don't mm-hmm. really see it going in at all. So right. like you don't get that full effect of it. That's mm-hmm. why it does kind of feel light when he puts her up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't yeah. even sure where he had got her. I thought yeah, he got her in the same throat. Yeah, me too. And later on, when they show a wide shot of it, she's got like a bloody piece on her chest. Like it had almost been put through right there. But it's the cow is like coming through her mouth. Right. It's really, Continuity. Yeah. yeah. That one's a little bit, uh, that one's a little iffy. A little off, yeah. 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 Not as, as. Yeah. Yeah. But there's something, I mean, like the, the, this, these moments of gore, right? If you, if you cut them out of a slasher film. Mm-hmm. What do you have? A, right. thrill, a thriller. Yeah. You have a thriller but you have movie. to be thrilling. But that's the thing. You have are to have sus- suspense then. Yeah. In which, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're a mystery, and I guess there's some kind of suspense. You don't even know that this is a whodunit really until the end because mm-hmm. it's pretty much. Much like forth Black the Christmas. Case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. you know, we know who this is. It's Harry Warden. Right. He's escaped from the mental institution yeah. and right. he's come back. And up till the end, I mean, that's what you think the whole time. So there's mm-hmm. really. The element of the whodunit doesn't come in until like, oh, it was him at the end, because you just think it's Harry Warden. Does it say on the back of this uh, the the video box here how much footage was reinstated into this release? That's what I was curious about. You just dated about. yourself by saying video box. I the video box. <laughs> the video box. What's the video box say? What is the, does that the, Betamax the, the, say? What does the picture box giving say? Away the format that we're watching. I suppose that we're watching it on. Uh, Do you have the of- film canister with you? Does it have the description on it? Read it to me, boy. Read it. <laughs> What were you asking? I'm sorry. I completely much, got lost in my own world. How much footage? Like a minute? Uh, oh, a yeah. Usually the label's like, 13 minutes, add it back in. Um, it, was, it felt like quite a bit. Well, it I don't was, know. It yeah, could it have been like quite a two bit. to three minutes, maybe, put uh, back into this. Total. It doesn't say. 
Well, I've seen the says, theatrical never version been... of this before. Yes, so have I. A, a while ago. Yeah. You know, when you're going through your initial slasher movie education and yep. you watch it mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, my bloody Valentine is really not, uh, you know. Not bloody. Really... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, you're just yeah. like, well, it's not. It's just my Valentine at this point. Until you see this version. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it completely, like, at least, you know, on my rewind, like, elevated my opinion of this movie, yes. like, considerably. Yes. Because, <laughs> like, like I said, the, the I mean, what other elements, just watching this normal without this footage, like, what other elements are keeping you going in this? Because, again, the whodunit factor isn't, like, there throughout. So what's keeping you going if you have, you know... You don't have stuff like that to look at throughout. Like, mm-hmm. why are you going to this movie? What's it doing for you if you don't have these scenes? Yeah, because I remember uh, there was another movie, uh, ironically, had the the opposite uh, effect. I mean, I remembered Gore. You ever seen The Prowler? No. Nope. So it's a Tom Savini movie that he did. Uh, I think that's also 81, the same year as this. And <clears throat> it has some moments in that thing that are so gory, I think, you know, I mean, Ooh. even watching it recently, I, I checked it back out again because I'm like, I remember the Prowler being a pretty decent slasher movie and I'm watching it. And I'm like, this movie sucks. <laughs> but then uh, murders would happen. And it was like, Jesus Christ. Like that's hideous. <laughs> like, and just so Damn. brutal. He, well, he, the guy puts a knife, like grabs this guy, uh, comes up behind him, right? Shoves the knife through the guy's skull. Top of his like, head. Yep. And you're like, uh, that's terrible and that's awful. And he's bleeding all over the place. But then he pulls it. He starts to pull the knife back out, and the guy's eyes go white ah. in the socket. He's like screaming, and you're like, "That's excessive." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Now I remember why I remember this movie. Ah. It's because when their murders happen, they stand out as being so fucking gory mm-hmm. that you go like, well, that was a good slasher movie, right?'" And then you go back later and you watch it, and like. Uh, the plot here is Fast not really to the holding this together. Yeah. So I guess that's maybe the delicate balance that the slasher movie is trying to achieve is like mm-hmm. to have enough of some kind of story or plot line going along with it that it also has like these moments of, you know. Yes. Yeah. Peaks. Special effects. Peaks of special effects. Because why are you going to these movies? Because well, you want to see that. You're going for the, the love triangle. I'm going for the romance, <laughs> Colin. I don't know about you. You're not going for all the Canadian beer product placement? Uh, Moosehead? Moosehead. Yeah. We should be drinking Moosehead tonight. <laughs> yeah, That's I what know. we said. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> like Moosehead or just like we meant or Labatt's? Just, Labatt, yeah, just, why uh, was there not tribute? any Labatt's in there? Did Labatt's exist yeah. at that point? It, it had to have. It that has like, to be an old like beer. Like Labatt's, it was like they invented Canada and Labatt's was the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like exactly. That's how that works. Yeah. So you think it would have to be in there. Did yeah. you notice there were some like Pepsi signs in the background though? Oh, like there, they? there was a couple on the wall and like when they when they decided to have their like secret party in the like, the, there was oh, a couple the, Pepsi signs on oh, the wall there? there in the background. And I was like, that's, that's interesting. That's a, that's a choice. That's an interesting <laughs> choice. Um, there was some, last week. There's some, some Schlitz in the background as well. A couple oh, of six oh, packs of Schlitz around yeah. there. So there was yeah. some yeah. reference to Coke. Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Somebody mentioned yeah. Coke. God. Point. Yeah, there was. <laughs> Oh geez, no. Okay, no, I got no. Yeah, what you talking about? No, does not even deserve. Oh, it's the first time I snorted out. coke, oh, and I almost on. drowned. <laughs> oh, my the guy God. is actually trying to snort, Howard, uh, Howard. Coca Cola through <laughs> yeah. a straw. Well, I mean, without Howard, you're not going to have. But he the, makes the same exact joke twice. He gosh. makes that same he's exact trying, he's trying joke to everybody twice. Else. <laughs> that was an actor's choice. I swear to God, uh-huh. that had to have been like an actor was like, hey, I got this really funny thing I want to do. And the director was like, all right, do it. And then he fit it in the movie twice somehow. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, have a, you know what it's like to snort coke through your left nostril? Watch this. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's like, uh, what's his name? Shelly. He was because he's, like he's the also of this the guy movie. who at the at the beginning isn't he the one who puts the blood, fake blood on him? Yeah, the, yeah, the fake one's him. Out of the and he Ooh, does no. the scare in the mine later yeah. on in the yeah. movie. Like, yeah. yeah, he's the Shelley of this movie. Yeah, and I'm glad he died. Yeah, I'm so glad he died. Yeah. Now he did awesome death too. He did. Now was that death not even in the movie? Does he just disappear at some point? He would have to, right? Because his whole death is something that is a restored footage, isn't it? Uh, it looked like it was the old. Fo- you can tell watching this movie what has been restored what, into what the movie. To him? I'm he got yeah, hung. Yeah, he got how he died. He, he got, got hung. hung. Remember? And then his head came. His off. Head, oh, yeah, his head popped off. off. Right. right. Yeah, he wouldn't have been in. The, he wouldn't have been his in head the popped right cut. off. Right. 
Well, there was also the the other two characters. Yeah, that, that is kind of weird that there's yeah. a number of murders that even in the uncut version happen off screen, but their the results are so gory that they cut it out. Yeah. But there's also the two the couple that are making out and get skewered together. All mm-hmm. right, the screw. <laughs> And <laughs> that was all added. So in the theatrical right. version, then they would have just gone off. Is a Horace? Horace is yeah. the Wolf of Brindley. Yeah, yeah. Horace yeah. comes into that room, and then would get killed. He wouldn't actually see. Right. We wouldn't. We wouldn't see him get killed. So we many just, plot holes without all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Wow. But that just cuts to they would just disappear, and then we, it would be Horace coming around the corner with the nails in his head. Like, that would be the next thing we see with Horace. Well, I think we get to see some of him. No, I mean, there was a scene, like, he wa- he wandered into the room where they were. Right. And then he, this, it starts with when he puts his hand over his mouth. Yes. That was mm-hmm. the restored footage. Right. Yeah. So they cut out him discovering the other two people dead. Right. And then it would just have jumped over that to him, like, in the room, walking back before the guy starts nail gunning him. And then that would have cut really early. I think there was, Did like, it, was one there one two, like, maybe one nail got into him. Okay. Because I didn't, I couldn't remember if we actually saw, or anything that wasn't restored was actually him dying. Yeah. If they wouldn't just cut to him falling over with nails in his head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You wonder how many of these, oh, go ahead. Here. It was just, it's really, really weird how, like excessive a nail gun is considered in the context of this movie whereas in like American Psycho a nail gun is like it's pretty like it's pretty gruesome but like compared to the other things that happen in the movie a nail gun's pretty like pretty humane tame. yeah mm. yeah tame. whereas in this movie it's like holy fuck yeah, he got a nail tame. gun yeah. yeah have we ever yeah. seen Lethal Weapon 2 it's pretty tame <laughs> yeah, in there yeah. as well yeah. <laughs> not so much a couple <laughs> nails to the head and that's it yeah. Evil Dead the remake yeah, yeah. That was oh pretty, yeah that was, that was a great use of a nail gun <sighs> yeah this is just where we're indulging our right? <laughs> yeah. most gory, gruesome moments. What's the appeal of that? Why do people watch these movies? That's the question that the critics and the MPAA, who cut For, all this uh, right. fucking <laughs> stuff out now, of is this that, movie. Is that what happened? The MPAA got, or oh, yeah. whatever the Canadian board of... Uh, no, this is the American one. It was a Paramount picture, okay. so it did come out. So they got a hold of it, and they're just like, no. Yeah. You're good Canadian folks, eh? You don't show this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know how the Prowler got through. Yeah, like, like why the did they amount? decide to make an example of this movie? I can only imagine other movies were had at least as maybe, much. Maybe maybe Moose had had a lot of say. That's true. Moose is like, movie. oh, can't have <laughs> we're our not putting our movie. name on this filthy movie. Right. No, yeah. if you have a beer, then you can't have the gore. <laughs> yeah. I wonder actually. And they really if wanted the beer. Was like the uh, you know whoever funded the movie once they saw it or something like that, like before it got to the mm-hmm. MPAA. I mean, maybe could be taken away from him. It says in the uh, opening paragraph to this movie. Yeah, by the financiers or something. So yeah. no, no, no. This is too. It goes across the line. Oh no, yeah. this represents uh, Canada. Eh? We can't do that. <laughs> How did the effects stack up compared to other slasher movies of its ilk? I think they did very well. I think they hold up really well. Yeah, yeah. I think it was good. I would like to see I, this uh, restored in some manner, like because you can you can tell um, any of the restored footage is very uh, still got all the film scratches and everything in it. It's got a different tint to it. It's a little red, so you can definitely tell when they come in with the the stuff they're putting back into the movie. This is something that like Scream Factory should hunt down and find that old footage and clean it up and put it back in there for you know a collector's edition of mm-hmm. this movie. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm guessing that the uh, somebody the this, negative is gone and that was a print. Maybe. So, like, the rest of the movie's transferred off the negative. Yeah. And then this is like, well, we got this print that we've got, but I'm sure you can color time. So, yeah, something. If they can do it. Get the orange out of it. And this is maybe, maybe a not. bad comparison. Like, if they can do it to, like, Jaws, they can do it to we this. Because they go in there and digitally, so. they, like, yeah. digitally fix cracks in film and everything <laughs> and put it together. Yeah. But it's Jaws, and this is my bloody Valentine. Not yeah. to say Slight that difference. one is, you know, I mean, come on. You know. Somebody could love this more than Jaws. <laughs> Somebody does. Somebody yeah. does. In Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. The, um, but that's, I guess, you know, I mean, the, the appeal of these films, I mean, I mean, I don't think that, you know, we're sitting around here like, you know, digging on these things and we're not antisocial. Are we? We don't want to go out and, you know, murder people. But that was... I mean, I don't want to do that. What everybody seemed to think at the time was that somehow it was going to corrupt the people who were watching it, who were mostly teenagers or Mm -hmm. young children. Mm -hmm. So we got to protect them from that as the MPAA. And Mm -hmm. we're going to cut all this stuff out of it. I grew up on a diet of this stuff. Right. And have you ever killed anyone that we know of? Yeah. At least not that I'll admit to. Okay. There you go. That's fine. (laughs) I think it's more of a release rather than a... 
a uh, cause of violence. I'm sure it can be, but correlation does not equal causation. Yes. Just remember that, people. Exactly. No. True. There you go. All right. Mm-hmm. So then I, yeah. it's an appreciation of the artistry of the illusion that's happening in front of you? Yes. It's like, my God, so. that looks so real. How mm-hmm. did they do it? It's a safe way to confront your fears. That's a, that's why theme parks exist. That's why horror movies exist. It's yeah. a yeah. safe way for mm-hmm. evolved humans to face things that they're afraid of in a way that doesn't actually put them in danger. Yes. Mm-hmm. The boot camp for death uh, idea. Yeah. Right? This is how to face your own mor- <laughs> mm-hmm. mortality. Yes. By exactly. Exposing yourself. Yeah. To- so when a crazed killer takes you hostage mm-hmm. in the basement, you'll be like, mm-hmm. I've already done this before. Right. Yeah. I've seen this. Yeah. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know how much anxiety I've had before I saw this movie about a, uh, a guy dressed in a mining outfit killing me? Were you really so afraid much. of mine shafts before Totally. This? Yeah. And then this movie came <laughs> on and I was cured. And now you're like, I can do it. I can do I it. Can I can go it. in Oh, I can't. Now. I'm still claustrophobic. <laughs> Fuck that. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to either. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much the killer. The small space. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to get me. No, Not thank you. Two thousand feet down in and dirty air. Cold. No, yeah, I, but I you Not feel doing that's it. where the atmosphere of this actually does seem to pay off. It's like I get the you know that it's dirty, you know, yeah. dirty air. You're breathing black shit in yeah. your lungs. Yeah, black <laughs> lung out of this. Black lung. I get the fact that it's cold because they're all running around with blankets and always talking about yeah. how cold it is, and they're all shivering. So it's like okay, I, you know, that's coming across. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if I get that it's 2,000 feet down, but I understand they're under the surface of the earth it's pretty somewhere. pretty far. Yeah, yeah, far enough. Yeah. Yeah. So the atmosphere is like really thick in that regard once yeah. they actually get into the mines. Mm. And to keep us occupied above ground, uh, we have a triangle, a love triangle between our three main characters. Their TJ, names being TJ, oh yeah, TJ. Axel and Sarah. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Holly. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Thank All right, you. So, who are these people? Uh, well, TJ, this his dad owns the mine. Yeah. Um, he has recently come back into town to find that his ex girlfriend Sarah is now with an old buddy of his, Axel. After a year, he's gone did, for a year. Yeah. Where did TJ go? I don't know. Hollywood. That's what I got, right? He went west. He went west. 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 Yeah. He, went, to the west he coast. went west. So Vancouver. Uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. That's yeah. what we decided. Yeah. 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 Canadian Manifest Hollywood. Yeah. Manifest destiny. He went west. Yeah. That's what you do. He just, he just said, God, call him to a mission out right. west. Yeah. Uh, you got to sow those wild oats. Yep. And that's where you Saw go. Saw down some trees. I yeah. don't know what you do. And you can right. tell he's been out west by the ascot he wears. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what. And the yeah. constant yeah. open shirt. Ah. Okay. Yeah. He's gotten a little fancy. Let's be real. He did porn. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but he told everyone he made a movie. That's what he tells everyone. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> then he comes back, tail between his legs to the town of Valentine Bluffs. And where, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? So now, you know, your girlfriend's taken up with this other guy. Mm. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Do you dress up as a minor and kill people? Is that what you do? Because you're angry? How? Is that what the movie, okay. is that what so the filmmakers it, want you to think? It, were you thinking that? Yes. At any point while you were watching this movie, I yes. mean, you'd seen. I, the had remake. I not recently watched the remake, I would not have thought that because it didn't. I, I didn't get that feeling from this. I did. I haven't seen this in a while, so I didn't remember who it was at the end. I figured it out part way through because obviously somebody's disappearing more than the other uh, ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought like, mm. and I think the filmmakers are setting it up to point at. Not if not just him, but he is one of the people. They're just like, well, he disappears and people die, and he comes back. I, I because I didn't remember who the killer was at the end. I wasn't trying to see if anybody cheated during the movie. If somebody was in a group while the, the killer was killing someone, mm-hmm. but as far as I could tell, yeah, he was the one they were pointing at as because uh, he's angry for most of the movie. His mm-hmm. motivation is that his girlfriend is no longer with him, mm-hmm. and he's angry at everybody. So it would make sense if he was the killer. But besides Axel, I didn't get the feeling that anyone, like, suspected him. I don't think so. There was no... Uh, like, Axel was the only one that had any, like, a- like aggression towards him. Right. Wait, but there was DJ? no, like... Yeah. Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> nobody suspected TJ, I'm saying. But nobody suspected anybody because everybody thought it was Harry Warden. Yeah. Right. So yeah, nobody... Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the legend they've been told their whole right. lives. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that maybe that's what we get most of the movie is that they are... It is Harry Warden right. until it's not. Yeah, 
because I mean, aside from I suppose that the idea is preposterous. This guy comes back every Valentine's Day, kills people, and disappears into the woodwork. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Which that's what I think they're. Well, I mean, that's just that's the story that uh, the bar owners. Right. Getting. So well, at some point, I'm yeah. like, are they setting it up like he's Harry Warden? Because of the, you know, I mean, he comes off as the most sinister character. Yes. Disgruntled. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But that all goes out the window as soon as he goes to rig up the uh, prank. little the prank. Yeah. He's all drunk and goes and like, I'm going to scare him. This is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that went on too long. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, how many times you that damn Exactly. Door? Way too long. Way too long. Like, I don't right, know. We get I like seeing him get so much joy out of He him. was having fun. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those damn kids. I'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> what for? But he was too amused by his own joke. He really was. <laughs> He's one of those kind of guys. But that's, yeah. you know, the kind of guy who flips his lid and goes as this off on a psychotic rampage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, uh, I mean, I guess, so once you disqualify him, toward the end, I got the idea that they were trying to cast uh, doubt on both TJ right. and Axel because yeah. it gets them in the exact same costume. Yep. Mm-hmm. Neither of them seem to be around when people are getting killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're separated. They come across them at different times. And there's always yeah. a reason, like, you stay here and watch the girls. I'm going to yeah. wander right. off. <clears throat> Even then Axel shows up and yeah. he says, you know, come with me. And then he falls into the, or whatever. He disappears for a yeah. little while. It's like, well, who in the fuck? And even TJ wanders off for some reason at some point. We still don't know why. Oh, He's like, the, you, and then the yeah. mind collapses yeah. on him. Yeah. It's like, what, why were you going that uh, way? It's like, what are you doing? Because he possibly could be Harry Warden. But oh, I guess man. you're right. It's like, maybe that movie, I don't know if I'm saying that. Maybe that it doesn't work in trying to make you think that one of these two guys, since it's working yeah. I, to try and make you think that one of these two guys is the killer, yeah. but it has so well established that Harry, Harry Warden, Warden has come back mm-hmm. yes. that you maybe aren't even considering that anybody but Harry Warden could be the killer. Right. Yeah. I think I went into it knowing that somebody was the killer and it wasn't Harry Warden. Maybe that's why I was looking at them. Because you'd seen it before. Yes. So maybe looking at it, not knowing anything, I wonder how long I would have gone to it still thinking it was Harry Warden mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how long that goes on. But it does seem like they're purposely casting doubt onto those two guys. Like that's what they're going for at that point because they keep making them disappear. Mm-hmm. For me, it had too many of the of like similar with the like love triangle thing. It had too many things in common with Black Christmas for me to think that it was Harry Warden because Black Christmas there's a lot of like there's a really angry boyfriend that just can't contain his rage just like this movie and I was like all, all right you're setting up the same sort of like casting yeah. doubt on these people mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah so I think they're trying to do that yeah but I mean but that's that's the route that they cling to in the remake the remake is all about casting uh, suspicion on both men yeah the Harry Warden yeah. isn't, is he, uh, how long is he a factor in the movie? Or like 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Because you actually get to see Harry Warden in the beginning of the yeah. remake. They actually, you know, there's an actor portraying him. Oh, yeah. So we know that he, well, I mean, I guess the whole thing in the remake is he. they shot him, right? Mm-hmm. And he may still have gotten away and be alive somewhere, even though mm-hmm. the older guys are like, no, we buried him, and then you go right. to the grave. You mean just like there. Michael Myers shot him and he got away? That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> because these psychos, <laughs> you just can't put them down with bullets. No. Don't do it. No. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, and, and that, as soon as um, Jen Snackle's character shows up, because he plays the TJ character, Tom, it's instant, like, suspicion. Just instant, oh, this guy's back, murders are happening, it's him. Like, instantly pins it on him. So I think if I didn't have that factor, mm-hmm. I don't know I would have gotten the suspicion in this one. Because I had that in my head already. I'm like, okay, they're going to pin it on one of these guys. Mm-hmm. Right. But if yeah. I hadn't had that, I don't think I would have gotten that feeling. Right. Now, yeah. Or is it just from that movie? Or can you take your knowledge of these movies kind of in general and look at them maybe casting doubt on those two? You know what I mean? Just as a construct in general. I mean, because I think I still would have gone in this movie looking at somebody, looking at people disappearing while the killer's around, and gone. Eh, I don't know, I, yeah, no, I'm saying like them. me personally, I would have been like, okay, well, it's one of these fuckers, like, right. for sure. But I don't, I didn't feel like the storyline was pointing fingers necessarily. Okay. I didn't, I didn't think that that was a 
a specific point that they were trying to make at first. Like at the end of the mine, obviously it starts right. to be more apparent, but throughout the rest of the movie, I didn't really get that feeling all that much yeah. because no one else has motivation. Like what's yeah. anybody else's motivation to do this? Like they're just fighting over Sarah. Right. Mm-hmm. What do they care? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because somehow that has to resolve itself is what you're thinking is like, you know, she's got to choose one of these yeah. two guys. Right. And if you establish that one of them is a psychotic, well, then that absolves her of having to, you know, break somebody's heart or let yeah, one, one of them down. But one of them and could I, get killed by the killer. I suppose, yeah, that could happen too. You know? Yeah. Speaking of motivation, mm-hmm. which we don't get until the very last <laughs> yeah. second in this movie, which is apparently something that was known by the mayor, because when we does reveal that, spoiler alert, that Axel, like, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, that Axel is indeed uh, the killer in this movie, uh, I think TJ's like, what? Can I, can I have one, two? Uh, TJ's like, what? And then it just goes to immediate flashback of something we saw before of Harry Warden killing um, a few people at the beginning. Yeah. That does that scene so giallo like though, because it was yeah. like literally, it was, you know, the killer is attacking, Sarah pulls the mask off. And then with the mask, uh, once he's unmasked, Axel's like, Whoa, you know, yeah. having his second face off. It's yeah. like, <clears throat> you know, done something to him. He's just kind of standing there frozen. And then we immediately flash back to the moment that Harry Warden killed his dad and yeah. got blood splashed all over him. And he hid under the bed. And this is the moment that created the psychotic break in right. the character. <clears throat> so I think that's even before. Uh, they run up and the sheriff's like, yeah, we know it's not Harry Warden because they called and said Harry Warden died right. five years ago. And then TJ and Sarah come out and they're like, it's Axel. And the mayor is like, oh, yeah, it was 20 years ago that the, he killed his father. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> uh, Thanks for withholding that key yeah. information this like, whole where time. Where were you, mayor? The worst what? sheriff ever. <laughs> but Harry Warden had killed, like, many of the kids' fathers, I assume. He killed the, uh, the six sure. minors, and but, then he killed the two. Uh, but how many did he kill in front of their children? Yeah. And just, uh, and just uh, their reaction. Uh, They're uh, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do oh, remember that. Axel. Right. Axel. That's a good point. <laughs> Axel, right. We should have thought about that. True. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go get him. <laughs> yeah. But Axel survives for another day because he saw his own goddamn hand off. He 127 and... hours himself. He, he really does, did. indeed. And I think... Uh, With no no qualms about it, just no no moaning, no, no sounds, just no. I'm going to do this thing because I need to. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, quietly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was. Well, that's like, what I wanted to... Like, it's completely painless. That's almost. what I wanted to say is because there's no, uh, there's no emphasis on it in this movie. It is reinserted footage, and I don't remember much music happening during like Mm-mm. to add suspense no. to this there wasn't any really at all was there not really because it no. really you really notice it when he is cutting his arm off because you think if there was a score to this there would be emphasis on him cutting his own arm mm-hmm. off yeah. but it's just kind of like oh oh that's what he's doing now <laughs> like you think there would be a sting or something yeah. to where this is what's happening right, right. now yeah. it takes him like two seconds and yeah. it's off well, he'd been working on it for a while yeah, his yeah. Hand oh, was stuck under the rock yeah. he's yeah. like back there and they're like, oh, look, he's still alive. So he had actually been. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like this is like their first time because they had so much suspense of like her walking down the street and zero of him cutting yeah. off his own arm. Right, yeah. Yeah, it was and, straight like, up. There was she's walking down the street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it felt like uh, there should have been something a little bit more in that scene. Again, yeah. I know it's reinserted footage and what have you, but it sh- feels like there should be a little more emphasis on what he's doing as mm-hmm. something that's just like, oh, shit, now he's doing this to escape. That kind of felt like, whoa, all right, it's a little quiet. But it's one of those bits where I didn't even realize in the theatrical version that, you know, when he stands up at the end, he's missing his arm. Yeah. Right. You're just like, wow. Uh, yeah. He just lost an arm in the uh, avalanche and that was it. Yeah. All right. And he does his little uh, whatever. Harry Warden. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, Be my bloody It's Valentine. very like, I'm, yeah. I'll get you my pretty. Yeah. yeah. It really is. is. Well, Be my bloody Valentine. I suppose that's the other thing too. You got to set up the sequel, right? Of course. If, yeah. if right. Friday the Thirteenth was so successful that they were making another one, like we could make My Bloody Valentine two. Did but, this uh, not do well? No, it didn't do well. I mean, financially, did it, yeah. Financially, the equivalent. So, okay, so I'm I'm undertaking a project right now because I'm kind of in like a oh. slasher movie mood. Uh, you know, just this era just going back and like looking at them and how they came about and all this mm-hmm. and uh i'm trying to find the box office like weekends because 
you know, I talk to people who say like they were coming out every week. And for the amount of movies that you look up on IMDb, that, you know, from 1981, mm -hmm. slasher films, there's like 20 of them or something, right? But when I was looking at the, <clears throat> like the box office returns that I could see, there was rarely anything on there. At least yeah. in the top ten. Uh. So I'm like, they're not debuting. I think like uh, Happy Birthday to Me cracked the top ten. <laughs> and Halloween 2 was like number one the week that it came out. I think October 30th mm -hmm. of 1981. Uh, but Friday the 13th did well. Or Friday, Sorry, Friday the 13th Part 2 in 1981. Uh, graduation Day, which opened I think the same day. almost Or the weekend before or after. Same day, I think. Uh which I've never seen this movie. Christopher George graduation is in day? graduation day. Wow. Made about as much as Friday the 13th. And then the fun house, I think also did, uh, that was the week after did decently well, but my bloody Valentine like was, uh, like half the gross of that or less. And I'm hmm. like, really, was it really not received that well? Like for that, you know, yeah, maybe because everything was cut out. Compa I mean, comparatively to the other movies that were coming out, then does this seem like a well, lot tamer? I mean, it's possible that even by this point in time, uh, you know, well, I don't, this doesn't check out either. I was gonna say that maybe people are getting tired of slasher movies because you know, Prom Night, <clears throat> Terror Train, the Jamie Lee Curtis set, right, mm -hmm. <clears throat> had already happened. Um, you know, Motel Hell, I guess, was trying to parody, ah, Motel. uh, you know, these type of movies. So maybe they were, I don't know. It could have been the promotion. I mean, it's another maybe. Paramount movie that, right. you know, they were the distributor of Friday the 13th and thought, you know, they would get into the marketplace with another holiday horror movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I can't explain why it didn't do well on its original release, except that it's not terrible. The original version isn't terribly gory. Yeah. So it could have been word of mouth. Maybe um, if you do possibly. the exchange rate into Canadian dollars, it's a huge, it's a it's huge, huge success. How many toonies and loonies did, yeah. uh, did this movie make? Yeah, because that's what you got, right? I mean, what do you have for Canadian horror movies? Black, Black Christmas, Christmas, My Bloody Valentine. That's it. And then the works of David Cronenberg. Oh, yeah, of course. well, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, nothing yeah. That springs I mean, to mind. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Not You'll at the time. I mean, case. but a Canadian <laughs> like horror movies made today, they're not they're made in Canada. Like everything's made in Canada now, yeah. but they're not technically Canadian. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like at what point did that start? I know because like, you can tell. I mean, obviously this movie is Canadian. Like we've been making we've been Canadians. making fun of it this yeah. whole time. Yeah. But cast with Canadians. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Although I don't know if it's supposed to take place in Canada. I think it is. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I would hope so. I mean, there are so many so. goddamn Canadian tuxedos in this movie. Okay. Like and the moose they hang out. They, they hang out in a right. junkyard. Be, yeah, they are yeah. hanging out in a junkyard for fun. Like yeah, cooking for fun. Totally Canadian like, like, like TV dinner like their engine. That's like, wonderful. The people that made Trailer Park Boys had had to have seen this movie. There's no way yeah. they have not seen this movie because this is this is like proto Trailer Park Boys. This movie, yeah. it's true. 100. Yeah, saying. All right, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go with that then. Yep. Yes, it's the true Canada horror movie. Yeah, because I think uh, Black Christmas fakes that it's American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In the police exactly. station, there's American yep. flags and stuff like mm -hmm. this. And there's so this American is, actors. The film and British. Too. All Canadian, yes. Because Olivia Hussey's British, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there you go. So yep. this is the true Canadian horror movie. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Best Canadian horror movie, not David Cronenberg, is My Bloody Valentine. I will say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're just saying that. We're talking <laughs> yeah. I know no different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, does that bring us to the end of My Bloody Valentine, uh, the discussion? Any random stray thoughts, ideas, or bits? No. While well, everybody thinks about this, listener, <laughs> if you stay tuned, we're going to have our mailbag, and then we'll come back and tell you individually what we thought of My Bloody Valentine. It could be good, bad. You don't know with these things, because we've been talking, like, it sounds positive, and then you're going to find out that, like, three of us hate it, and only one of us is here liking the movie. Suspense. You got to wait until after the mailbag. We're often surprised by each other's final verdicts. And you will mm -hmm. be too. I'm sure tonight. Because just <laughs> the way Sean's looking at me, I can tell he's expecting something weird. All right. So uh, then we. Of the horror summon. of a long time ago. <laughs> it's just got to be our oh, sing out. Oh, it's so good. Uh, can we get that on the soundtrack somewhere? Uh, I looked. Mondo didn't do anything. Come on, I don't Mondo. Think it's just, 
Put this on I mean, vinyl. It's easily available on YouTube, but I don't think anybody's released this. The Unfortunately, <laughs> I would buy this bloody single. Yeah, I would too. If, if yeah. it was released. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Ballad of Harry Warden yep. by Paul Zaza. Right? It could come in a. It, they could fit that in a heart uh, case. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> oh, they totally could in a heart vinyl case and sell. Oh shit! I'd buy the shit awesome. out of that. Genius. That's copyright. Uh, copyright 2017. Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. My thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Is Igor Canadian? Are you Canadian? <laughs> How can you tell? It's a hockey. I'm sure you ever heard him say his abouts and I think his. He's, I think he's a gypsy. You think so? I he's think drinking so. Labatt. <laughs> Igor. <laughs> I knew it. That's what does it. All right. So if you want to email us, and we hope that you will, uh, you can email us on, uh, or you can get a hold of us on facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us the old fashioned way Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Uh, and we would be happy to read your comments on the air. You can comment about My Bloody Valentine or any show that we've done or suggestions you want to give us. Or, uh, tell, just us tell us your Howard favorite did. Canadian horror movie. Yeah, yeah, what do you guys like? What do you do we have, like? Do we have Canadian, Canadian fans? <laughs> do we we have, like the Canadians. We do. We do. We're very nice people. All right, so here's the uh, mailbag for this week about our episode Terror Track. Ooh. Adam. Oh, Adam, I'm going to screw up your name. Oh, shit. Rish. Rish. Kotsky. Adam Rishkotsky. <laughs> oh, it's handwritten on there. It was oh, from Jesus. YouTube. He said, this is a great episode. Thank oh, thanks. you. Oh, thank you. That was a fun it's one. Really that was nice. good. That was yeah. a fun one. That was fun. Yeah, everyone ignore the Raw Head Rex one. Go straight to Terror Track. Yeah. That was the more entertaining, yeah, yeah. That was the more entertaining episode. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> All right, about Rock and Roll Nightmare. Uh-huh. Uh, Dom Cree says, I honestly thought about watching this after listening to the review but once I watch the clip you posted on Facebook, <laughs> I pass. Ah, uh, good choice. Uh, a good choice. Good choice. Uh, I don't upon blame by you. the majority <laughs> of the yeah. podcasters here. Yeah. Uh, Bobette Georgie writes in at well, we, okay. So we were posting. If you have subscribed to us on Facebook, it was uh, I, we were showing sharing photos from the movie, and one of them was a picture of uh, John Michael Thor, the star, uh, in his in the you studded know, cod the, piece, in, in yeah, the, with ah. the, the hands of the group, yeah. And uh, she says one of the one post is funnier than the next with this movie. The groupie's hands clawing at him! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! So yeah. It's, uh, yeah, indeed. If only the movie it's, was that fun. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If only. I mean, it was for me, but that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the majority. There you go. He was there that last is. man standing. Yep. Um, so about my bloody Valentine, Ryan Burt writes in and said, This is one of my favorites, and the remake was pretty solid as well. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think we all agree on that one. Yeah. And G Money writes in and says the 09 version is awesome. If you can see it in 3D, it has very impressive kills and a load of fun. The 81 version is still entertaining enough. It's just dated like all of our other loved classics. I think it's because I didn't see it until I was an adult that I'm not as attached to it. But conversely, I watched The Burning for the first time ever four years ago and hailed it as a masterpiece. You mentioned The Burning earlier. The Burning. The Burning. Yeah, it's a cropsy. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. So uh, he also says, if I'm watching these types of movies, the more fantastic the kill, the better. Just give me the three Bs, boobs, blood, and babes. Well, there's no boobs in this. Don't you get the babes with the boobs? Like one, you can't have one without the other, really. Three bees, though. They're, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I there wasn't any boobs in this bees, movie, though. Yeah. I know. There was, was no boobs. There was I no boobs. I remember there being boobs, movies. and there were no boobs. The closest <laughs> we got was at the beginning. That we shitty got tattoo. There were, but there were no bras. <laughs> Aside from the one at the beginning, the rest yeah. of the movie, there were yeah. no bras. Yeah. 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 Wow. Fully clothed. This is a pretty <laughs> chaste movie when it comes right. to sex, actually. As opposed to the remake, which had what I had only seen for the first time. The the I, is it a kill at the beginning where the woman's just running around naked throughout the entire movie? Uh, it's a it, it's not quite at the beginning, but it's but it's there. Yeah. And 
that was the first time, especially in 3D, that I had seen something like that when that first came out. <laughs> like, wow, you don't see that every day. And in 3D. Bravo to these films. You and I thought that was funny. This yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Running around stark naked. Yeah, I, I'd never seen that before. That's one of those gonzo movie movies. Yeah. You don't remember that movie until the day you die. Yeah, just like, whoa. Yeah. All and right. also, it employs a little person as the, you know, like, I like it when movies do stuff like that where it's not written that way. Mm. The, yeah. Uh, the manager of the hotel. It's just a little person. <laughs> Yeah, They're like, okay. I even, yeah. I even remarked that Colin and I were watching it, and I was like, it's really nice to see little people getting regular work. Yeah, I not, love that. Not being <laughs> like a creature yeah, or something, right. just yeah. being it's a like, person. She's yeah, just exactly. the manager of a hotel. Yeah, yeah. 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 could have been anybody. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Beautiful. That's yeah. great. Bravo. Yeah. All right. So that's yeah. uh, the mailbag. So that brings us around to our final wrap-ups. Who do we have first? Colin, <laughs> what did you think about it? I didn't know where I was going there. I'm like, you why always we, get mad at me when I say I know. It. I, I couldn't think. I was just like, well, who's to, to, no, you. Colin, what did you think about My Bloody Valentine 1981? Uh, well, I kind of already gave this away. I think, um, you know, my opinion on it has, has changed with the viewing of this version of it, with all the mm. gore pet put back in. Uh, it really did... You know, now I think it's like one of the best slasher movies of that vintage. I think it's better than some of the Friday the 13th movies even. I think the, um, you know, because it has, because of the the gore effects, right, which are extreme. They're maybe not Tom Savini level, but they're mm. pretty good. It's Tom Berman yeah. before KNB, right? That was... Ber- Berman, wasn't it Tom Berman and, uh, and I think so. Nicotero? And, Nicotero. Um, uh, Is there an N? Kurtzman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Robert Kurtzman. Right. Yep. Yeah, um, so it was him probably getting his start doing doing these type of effects. Um, but I think you know, beyond that, there's a naturalism. I think maybe to the characters. Mm. Yeah, very, that's really... what we didn't mention. That's what I liked about this, and I'll, I'll let you go on. But yeah, that's a great <laughs> part of this movie. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because you have people that you genuinely, I think. Well, I don't despise them, which is my problem no, with and the- new, you know, with a lot of the newer slasher movies. I hate the people, like actively yeah. hate the people because they're all, you know, what, I mean, what you, they're not all mean girls. I mean, there's guys in there too, but it's like a certain, uh, there's cliques and all. Right. They're just like really rotten people. Yeah. You know, and just bad people. The thought process, I even remember at the time Toby Hooper talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he's like, well, he, he put a bunch of hippies in it because, you know, at the time people were tired of hippies and would love to see a bunch of them get squished. So <laughs> he's, uh, you know, if you use that rationale, then, you know, we're going to put all these teenagers that, you know, we want to see them somehow get killed. And then it somehow justifies the serial killer you know, character taking them out. Right. I don't agree with that. No. I think you try to build some kind of empathy for the characters, which I think this did. I mean, Holly's back there like, oh, no, Horace, you know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what did they really do to his character to, ende- you know, I, I mean, he's not a, a especially three dimensionally written. No, character. but there's a camaraderie to these people. It feels like they hang out like that. They like each he's other. He's a nice guy. Yeah. And broke they feel up, like. Broke up the fight. Right. Just wanted to they be feel blessed. like nice people, like they know each other, like they've yeah. been friends for a long time. Yeah. And it's not even just at the forefront. It's just stuff that's happening in the background yeah. that makes you think that these people, you know, it's like a each other. It's knit group. Yeah. It's very inbred community. There's yeah. like, there's exactly five guys and five girls. Thank God. It just matches <laughs> up like perfect or whatever, you know? I mean, it's because I think it's very small. They have a history together. You feel that. They all drive around in these fucking awful beat up cars and everybody this is just a fact of life and it's that kind of blue collar uh slice of life i got the same thing out of the original friday the 13th like those camp counselors felt like genuine people to me mm-hmm. you know at least in the first one be- they become more plastic as they go <laughs> yes you know into the sequels but this uh you know these two movies i mean friday the 13th and this one i think are some of the you know probably i'd say you know of that era, I'd like you go to that and Halloween too, maybe right? You know, uh, so yeah, I would definitely recommend my bloody Valentine. Um, you know, when you're comparing it to the modern one, that's a little bit of a different beast because now you've got you know, the technology is better. It's 3D. It's more entertaining. There's more action. You know, um, of 
of 80s slasher movies, this one ranks really high on my list. Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. So mm-hmm. of this vintage, this is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, so do you recommend it? Yes. <laughs> go see it. Yes, go see it. Um, I mean, like Colin said, and that's a point I wanted to bring up earlier, like it does feel like, uh, you know, you do like these people, and everything Colin said about that is pretty much spot on. Um, I've seen this movie before. It was a long time ago. Um, again, this is one of those, me and my brother going to the video store, just grabbing everything we could to watch them, bad and good. Um, I remember uh, liking this movie. But I had never seen it before with all the uh, deleted stuff put back in. It's, I think, a much better movie with that. I, I do. I like the kills. I like the effects. Um, I would like to see a uh, complete version of this. Everything put back together, cleaned up. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, I'd buy the shit out of that, especially the, the vinyl of the, uh, the ballad yes. of uh, uh, Harry Warden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I buy the shit out of that. But Plus the other songs by Lee Childs or whoever. The, right. The additional <laughs> songs. And one Dolly Parton. Yeah. yeah. yeah one Dolly Parton <laughs> one snuck afford. in there. Yeah. <laughs> um. But like, and they were like, "Yeah, they're Canadian. We won't sue them or anything. Let them go." <laughs> um. But it's actually a very good movie. And at a at a brisk ninety minutes, um, especially with the kills added back in, uh, I, I thought it uh, it went along at a nice clip. Um. Uh. I really like this movie. I would definitely recommend it. I will watch it uh, again. Uh, only this version, though. I, I think the uh, the cut down original version might end up being like there's not enough there to maybe draw you back to it. But with everything put back in, uh, it's definitely something you should watch and uh, keep going back to. I recommend it. Yeah. So late seventies, early eighties slasher movies is some of my favorite like subgenre of horror. I think like it's that moment in time that is never going to be able to be recaptured again, which is really which is really sad to think about that like future generations won't be able to live through that. But you know, um, at least it always exists for them to rediscover on their own. But I I agree that like I had seen this before, but I had seen the like not special edition without the re-added footage, and I and like I remember remember next to nothing about it, and I think that's because it's a really forgettable movie without all the added in footage. Yeah. Um, but the special edition is I love it. I think it's great. I, I highly recommend it. As uh, one of our characters, TJ says in this movie, I think it goes really good with a beer and a real good nose pick. Uh, so yeah. that's how I would recommend this movie. He said that, yeah, yeah at the beginning. Yeah. He said, he said, "Where are you going?" He said, "To have a beer and a real good nose pick." He that's said, as offensive as the Canadians <laughs> get in this movie. Yeah. That is the extreme that they went to. And that was like that's that's how Canadian this movie is. That's like the only one liner like in this whole movie, <laughs> aside like, from the coke. <laughs> Drowning the coke, the yeah. yeah. I maybe that's really funny up north. Maybe that's hilarious. <laughs> that's, like the, that's like the go-to joke yeah. in Winnipeg, yeah. eh? That's what they do. Maybe that's like a Yakov Smirnoff type joke in Canada, <laughs> right. you know? Like, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think only watch the special edition. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. watch anything else. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a great um, like kind of seasonal watch to fill in the gap between Halloween and, you know, the rest of the year. Because you have Friday the 13th for the summer and, you know, all those other ones. But, like, during the winter, it's what? The Shining or and The yeah. Thing and that's it? Like, mm-hmm. there's not much else seasonally to watch. So, yeah. definitely check this one out. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're all kind of on the same page with, with this one. Um, I, I This is my first time watching it. So, I, I was... a a first timer in this one. I I watched the remake recently, um, which I think I have seen the remake now that I rewatched it, but that's besides the point. Um I I have to agree, I think the I think the original edited version would be a little difficult to watch. Um, because the the added scenes is really what pulled this movie together. Like I honestly thought it drug a little bit. I thought it was a little slow, but those those scenes that had the, the graphic kills, it drew, it drew you back in. It really did. Um, so I can't really imagine watching it without it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was, it was a tough one because I, I didn't really know what I thought about it until I heard that song at the end. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that, that hooked me in. Um, I would say if you're going to, if you're going to watch it, if you can't watch the extended special edition, um, I would go with the remake instead. But 
if you do have the capabilities to get your hands on the one with the added footage, it's a good watch. I I, I thought it was really great uh, with the kill scenes. Um, yeah, sometimes sometimes this subgenre, as she said, the 70s and 80s, sometimes they're a bit too dated to really sit through. Um, like I drank a whole bottle of wine, so I was a little tired, <laughs> <laughs> but this actually kept me awake. It was, it was interesting enough to keep me going. Um, so yeah, I would say if you can get the extended cut, I, I would definitely give my bloody Valentine a shot. I give it four bloody boxes of chocolates out of five boxes of hearts. Yeah. Boom. No. Bloody hearts. <laughs> All right. So there you go. My bloody Valentine. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie chosen by Michaela. All right, Michaela, guys. What are we watching? Oh, God. Uh, so, so we've been talking a lot lately about um, the history of Hollywood animals. Oh, no. So, oh. so oh, I no. think you, you might regret letting me choose a movie at all, but we're going to watch George Romero's Monkey Shines. Ooh. Oh, Monkey yeah. Shines. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>